Hello, and thank you for joining me for Tune In Tuesday. My name is Sharon Rogers, and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Wells, Maine. And if you're watching this live, it is Tuesday, December 12th, 2023. And in just two days, on December 14th, Stampin' Up! is offering free shipping on orders of $75 or more for one day only. So this is a great opportunity to take advantage of that promotion and also my Tune In Tuesday class kit offer. Now, if you've ordered from me in the past year, you will be receiving a special Christmas card or holiday card from me in the mail shortly, if you haven't already. And that um, has a little extra gift in there from me uh, of a percentage off your order between December 15th and December 31st. But because of this great new promotion that Stampin' Up! is having on the 14th, I'm going to honor that for December 14th as well. So if you want to order some presents for yourself, or if you want to get your spouse to order presents for you, or you want to order for a friend, then now is the time to do it. Or should I say, December 14th is the time to do it. But for now, let's get started on our Tune In Tuesday class. This Tuesday, I am featuring the Meandering Meadows Designer Series paper, and oh my goodness, it is beautiful. Let's take a look. Look at all this beautiful six by six paper. So you get um, a lot in here. There are 12 different designs, four of each, and the backs are also beautiful. You know what? I didn't even see the, all the backs yet. So, so pretty. And we've just got some beautiful spring or summertime scenes. Now, if you are like me and live in a northern climate right now, this is not what you're seeing. But we will be seeing it soon enough. And, you know, what better thing to do over winter in New England then create some beautiful cards. If you love flowers, this is the only way you're gonna get them during our winter season. So you can see there's lots of really beautiful patterns. I mean, this really is stunning paper. Let's see what we can do with it. So let's cut right next to the tree. It's so hard sometimes finding the right spot to cut and what to cover up and what not to cover up. Um, you know what? So we don't actually need a, a granny apple green here. And I want this to be a four and a quarter inches wide. So now I'm going to cut off the other side. And you have these strips to decorate the inside if you'd like. And then I need the um, need it to be five and a half inches tall. I think I'm going to cut off the sky. Not that the sky isn't pretty, it is. So I have this piece, piece of thick basic white here. Hot dog fold. And this is going to cover up the entire front piece. Let's bring in our liquid glue. Just going to cover up that entire front piece. A pretty card and now we we really just need a sentiment let's go ahead and bring in this new stamp set and it's called perennial postage it's got a lot of beautiful sentiments and it will coordinate with a set of dies mm, 
Let's see if I can find them here. I've used them a little bit. So there's a there's one missing in here. It's over at my cutting station, but lots of different postage stamp, you know, that kind of edge, postage stamp edge, lots of different rectangles. There's one, the missing one's two, three, four, five, six. Um, and then there's two square ones and then one that's just sort of almost a label. It's just on the ends and then a watermark piece and for like a hole or a tag hole. Um, and this would be a reinforcer of sorts. So these are coming. These are coming in the next mini catalog, which launches in January, as does this stamp set. And uh, I will use the die a little bit later, but for now I'm just going to use one of these sentiments. And so which one will we use? I wanna have this, this is gonna be a little bit um, brighter. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use the, you are loved beyond measure. Uh, is that too long here? Let me see. Let me see, I haven't even mounted it yet. Nope, that's going to work. That is going to work. So you are loved beyond measure. Now let me show you. I haven't done this in quite a while. So let me show you the best way to mount your stamps. All right, to mount this, you're going to peel off the backing from the red rubber stamp. Find the matching sticker. And you're not going to... Um, just peel off this back and you're just going to bend those split pieces back and then remove the whole sticker. I have a teammate, Julie, whose eyes are, are giving her some trouble and my eyes are giving me trouble as well. And she found this from another demonstrator. I think it was Susan Campfield. And uh, she said it was a game changer for her and I tried it and she is absolutely right. So I've now put this on a clear block and I'm gonna look right through my block and make sure my outlines are lined right up and press that on and it's perfectly mounted. It's amazing, It really is a game changer. And I just took it off and put it back on, but I didn't need to do that because I am going to be using this. So now I need to get a piece of cardstock and I'm going to cut a um, just a, a banner. So a very simple banner. Let's get a trimmer out here. And it looks like this is about, about three and a half inches. I'm going to go ahead and cut it at four and then it looks to be about if I put this on my ruler it looks to be a little bit over an inch so I'm going to cut it an inch and a quarter I think that should do it what color do we want this Let's see we've got all sorts of colors in here I think I'll just bring in a garden green. It's kind of one of the mid-tone green colors here. Oh, that's much wider than it needs to be. And I'm going to I'm going to shift it over to the right. I am going to trim this off a little bit. I guess it only needed to be maybe maybe in Maybe an inch and an eighth would have been better. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now on this other end, it's a little bit long still. I'm gonna trim this down too. And we're gonna flag it. So you are loved beyond measure. You know what, I think I want it, I think I do want it a little bit closer. 
I'm going to get that really, really close to the You Are Loved. Sorry for the clanging of my dishes. They're not really dishes. It's my glue holder. I'm going to flip this one over. So in the end, it's going to be about an inch an inch wide. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right. And while this is fine, I'm going to bring in a little piece of this petal pink glimmer paper. It comes in a package of three colors. It's called Three Color Glimmer. And you get two sheets of Highland Heather and two sheets of the Petal Pink and two sheets of the gorgeous, gorgeous um, Pretty Peacock. And this is also an online exclusive. It's a little smelly too, gotta say. And I'm gonna cut a piece that's a half an inch. I do not need a lot of this stuff. That is for sure. And I'll start with three and a half inches, but I think I'm only gonna end up going to three inches based on what my card looks like. So I just wanna, I just wanna put this under heat, under here a little bit. Just makes that pop, ties in the cloud colors, just gives it that extra special piece to it. And I am gonna make it smaller too. I wanna make it look intentionally off from the banner itself. So I'll do something like that. All right, that means we need to take a little glue we're just going to adhere this right to the very top or put that on the very top and adhere the very bottom of my sentiment to it. Trying to get that straight. It's good. The glue gives you a little bit of extra time. Ah. You do need to let it sit a little bit though because that glimmer paper is kind of slick. So you let it sit right in there for a second. There we go. There we go. And now let's go ahead and put this up with dimensionals because why not? Yeah, I think it would look nice popped up on dimensionals. And we can put the dimensionals in here so that um, it does also give some extra strength behind that seam. Try to get it straight. There we go. There we go. You are loved beyond measure. And we could put some something on the inside. Let's see. Is there another stamp that goes on the inside? How about you're simply marvelous or thank you for your friendship? Hmm. Sending love and best wishes. You mean the world to me. I'm going to go with you mean the world to me. And I'm also going to find this, this strip that I originally had cut off. And I'm going to put that in here just to tie the inside with the outside. We don't want it quite so tall. And the other side, eh, it's kind of an icky brown, so... I don't want that. It's not icky brown, it's pecan pie, but compared to the front side of this, it's icky brown. Let's cut it at five and a quarter. 
And I don't think I want it quite so wide either. I think I only want a half an inch strip. stamped with the garden green on the outside so let's go ahead and stamp on the garden green on the inside and let me go ahead and show you one more time how to mount those stamps so I said you were going to do uh, we were going to do you mean the world to me so we need to find that one and I think it's this one right here we'll peel off the backing from the red, red rubber piece. We're going to find the coordinating sticker. You mean the world to me is right here. And find where it splits and just kind of tear those back. It just makes it easier to tear off in the end. And then take the whole sticker off, sticker and backing. Lay it down onto a block. Peel off those backings. And now you're gonna line it up. Oops, I didn't mean to stick it down right yet. Whew. Saved it. It's pretty sticky stuff. So you do wanna make sure that you've got it right. Perfect. And now we'll go ahead and ink it and stamp it. I love the mixed fonts in this set. Really, really pretty. You are loved beyond measure. This one, I think this one deserves some full on bling. So we're gonna bring out the basic rhinestones. And let's go ahead and pull in different sizes here. We've got the small, we've got the large. Oh, I think I might be out of the mediums on this one. We always want an odd number, remember? So there we go, now we have an odd number. Just got some extra little bling on there. Pretty simple card. The idea for this next card came from a fellow demonstrator, Mary Dithridge. Uh, Deathridge, Deathridge, I'm not quite sure. She stamps and lingers anyways uh, on online. And we want to start, I'm going to do it a little bit different than she did because she used two different pieces of designer series paper. And um, I just realized that the one I just chose is not going to work for my alteration of what I want done. So I want to take this piece right here. And I'm going to cut it down to three and three quarters by, and I'm going to cut off the top, three and three quarters by five. So that's what I'm working it with right here. And now I'm going to cut on an angle. And the angle's not super important but you want to know I'm going to be getting a two and a, um, a quarter inch wide strip so I just want to make sure I can see what I'm getting and so like if I did this I'm getting about you know I'm, I'm getting that stuff right in there so let's go ahead and just do a cut 
okay? And then I'm going to flip this over and I'm gonna put it on the two and a quarter inch mark right over here. And I'm gonna cut the other side. And so what we have is something that looks like this. And if I were to piece these pieces back in here, they're not the same and this isn't gonna work. So I need to um, do a slightly different approach. I'm gonna bring in So originally what I had hoped was when I cut off these pieces, I could just flip them, but I can't because they, when you flip, they, they change the orientation of the card. Um, let's, let's get out the beautiful, 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 um, pretty peacock shimmer paper. That would go nicely on this, I think. Yeah, that kind of pulls it all together. It's pretty, pretty snazzy. I'm going to cut this piece to be three and three quarters. Ooh, and I forgot what it's best to cut with the white side. It's easy. I, I have just heard from a well-known demonstrator that it's better to cut on this side. So I'm going to try that. I think that was... Hmm. I can't remember who it was now. I'm sorry. Rachel Tessman, that's who it was. So she knows her stuff. So I'm going to go with her on this. And you can see that this fits right in like this. So I've got that little pretty strip going on. It's a little bit hard to tell that this is, you know, a tree in here, but I think we're gonna make it work. You can definitely see that this is a path with flowers. So I need to set this apart a little bit. So I'm gonna bring in some Highland Heather cardstock, and I'm just gonna make a strip that's gonna go so it's, it's going to look like this. And these purples and greens together. That's kind of snazzy, I think. I like it. So I'm going to just cut a, cut a couple strips. Not worried about width. Who wants to measure? I don't want to measure right now. I'm going to just border this. So that's the bottom one down here, and I will cut off the excess. But this will go up here. Okay. So um, in her video, Mary used a second sheet of this beautiful designer series paper. I just can't bring myself to do that. This paper is just so darn pretty that to use this side of it is, uh, it's hard for me. Of course, I know I could always buy some more and I probably will because this is downright gorgeous paper. All right, so I've got my strips on there. Now you can see what's going to happen. Oops, it goes up this way. We're going to have this going corner to corner, and we can. What we can do is we can snip off all the other pieces that um, don't really look right there. So we could, let's go ahead and put this down.
And if you remember, that goes to the corner. And this goes to the corner. Just give that a second to set up. This might have looked pretty with the purple, purple glimmer behind it too, but needed the contrast. Just flipping and trimming away from the other side. And so now we have something that looks like this. And I think we just need a sentiment and we're going to be good to go here. All right, I'm going to bring in a piece of Highland Heather that is, um, it is three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. Could easily do four by five and a quarter. You don't want to worry about the eighths. When I mount this, see, it looks like it's just a continuation of those pieces right here. It looks like these are triangles that have been cut, when in reality, it's a whole solid background. All right. Hold that down for a second. Uh, that looks good. That looks good. All right. Let's bring in a piece of thick basic white card cardstock. Here's a thick basic white card. Let's adhere this right on. very rich looking card but look at that white how it really makes that whole scene pop now granted there is a lot of this sparkle here so what i think i'm gonna do i didn't mount that exactly straight but it appears now it's already stuck so we're gonna call it good i'm gonna take a take this down just a notch by stamping a sentiment and um, mounting it on a piece of white. Nope. Let's use thank you. You know what? I never have enough thank you cards. I'm going to use thank you. And since I can't seem to find some of my blocks at the moment, I'll just take this one and we may as well stamp in Pretty Peacock. die cut this using my stylish shapes dies which are my favorites that one's kind of big Ooh, that one's going to be perfect so it's the third smallest i'll be back all right here we have our thank you and we're just going to mount that right there with some dimensionals You know, what you don't see on Tune In Tuesday is all the mess that's out here. Because I need to have everything reasonably close. So it gets all stacked up. And then when I'm moving things around and trying to get them on the video, ooh, it becomes a hot mess. I could also put it down. Ooh, ooh, do I want it down here? Do I want it here? Do I want it up here? I think this piece is bigger, so I think I do want it up here. I'm going to go down in here like that, though. And so there we have our thank you card. So it's kind of, um, it's an interesting card because it's got a lot of bling, but then this is, this is a very peaceful piece, but I don't know. It's kind of different. It's not my usual style. So I try to show you some different things. All right, I decided what I was going to do for the inside because I didn't have a usable piece of the designer series paper uh, to use up here because they were triangles. I just chopped off another 
tiny piece. This is a 3 8 inch wide by 4 inches long piece of that beautiful three color shimmer paper. I think that, you know, they're getting a little, um, the shimmer paper is very popular. So every catalog, they seem to come out with more combinations and I think they're running out of ways to name it because this was three color and a lot of them were three color, but you couldn't name it the way the last one was named, I guess. So and there we go. There's a quick and easy thank you card. Well, it was not quite as quick as I had hoped, but it is, it's still not very difficult. All right, I have just a quick TV timeout for you. If you would like to receive a class kit that will allow you to create each of the cards that I've made tonight, simply place an order of $40 or more in my online store, and I will send you all the supplies that you need to create one of each of the four cards I made using the Meandering Meadows. Now the, the pattern may change depending on how many people want the class kit, but you will be able to create the four cards. And I'll also provide you with the supplies to create those same four cards, but with a different designer series paper. This is the One Horse Open Sleigh paper. That was from three or four months ago in the online exclusives, and it's still available, but it's wonderful winter scenes. And so um, these cards will look great with this paper as well. So you will have the supplies to create eight cards. That's an extra Christmas present for you. Usually it's only six cards, five or six cards. So I hope you'll enjoy that. Again, place an order of $40 or more to get that class kit. If your order is $60 or more, I'm going to include um, some extra glimmer paper for you. I will give you a four by six sheet of each of the colors of that glimmer paper. And of course, if your order is $75 or more, you wanna make sure you place that order on the 14th, that's Thursday, so that you can get free shipping. If you live locally to me, I'd be happy to combine all our orders together um, for that free shipping in a, in a workshop, what they call a workshop, um, when I'm combining a lot of local orders together. And then you can just arrange for delivery or pickup. All right, let's create some more cards. All right, I don't know what happened, but this card is not the one that just popped up previewing what we're going to make. And that's because the video disappeared. I don't know if my phone froze because the battery was getting low or what, but it wasn't there and I didn't discover it until it was too late. So now I have to recreate it, but I'm going to, the second part of this video will be the original card um, whose picture you saw leading up to this. So we're going to start with a piece of blueberry bushel cardstock, and this measures seven and a half by five and a half, and it is scored already at four and a quarter. So it's really just a card front with one inch cutoff. We're going to take a piece of our designer series paper that coordinates, and you can see that the blue in here does coordinate, and you need to decide which part you want to feature. I want this to be five and one quarter inches um, in width, so I'll go ahead right now and just, I want this other side featured though, so five and a quarter, we'll cut that there. Now this piece right here is three and one quarter inches tall. So we want our layer to be three inches tall. So we need a piece of designer series paper that is three by five and a quarter. I'm gonna cut that one off right here. I want the tree all the way in it if I can get it. And then for the bottom piece, you need a piece that is one and a half inches by five and a quarter. And then you have this piece left over for the envelope or something else.
Now we're going to adhere this piece. Whoops, jumped right off. We're going to adhere this piece to the front. Ooh, the back side's pretty too, isn't it? Most of the back sides are fairly plain, but some of them have got some beautiful floral stuff going on. All right, so there we go. And then this piece is going to go here. But now I think this is where my other video picks up. Let's bring in a piece of basic white that is four by five and a quarter. We will simply attach this piece. I'm not gonna leave a border at all. I'm gonna put it right at the base of the white. And then we'll adhere this to the inside. Now, because most of these prints have multiple colors in them, what you could do quite easily is, especially if this is gonna be a gift for someone, but even if it's for yourself, you could stamp a whole bunch of different images for or a whole bunch of different sentiments in different colors and die cut them or punch them, however you wanted to have them mounted. And then, then the recipient or you can just choose what you're going to use when you need it. We all have those emergencies, don't we? Where we all of a sudden need a card and we don't have any time to make one. Uh, this is obviously a card that's quick and easy to make anyway, but let's, uh, let's go ahead and, oh, I've got another scrap here somewhere. Hmm. We'll take this one, I'd cut some bears out of it. Um, let's go ahead and make, uh, you know what would be pretty is to offset this a little bit. I like that Highland Heather that's in there. Let's bring in a little piece of Highland Heather. And I'm gonna bring in my double oval punch. Now we just need a sentiment set to go with that maybe. So as I was saying, you could just take a sentiment set like this and punch all sorts of different shapes out or stamp them in whatever color that you want. And then they could just be used to add it to the card. I think I'm going to use, I think I'm gonna use Hey There from Charming Sentiments. Charming Sentiments is one of my go-to greeting sets. It's just got so many different, different options here. And what color are we going to stamp in? I think, I think I'm gonna go with the blueberry bushel because that's the card base. I've already got the smaller oval punched out. And here's, let me show you what I did. So I took my scrap and I, I punched out this and then I held it over different greetings to see if they fit. And the hay there fits very nicely. And it's photopolymer, so I can stamp it without worrying if, if I'm going to get it straight or centered. Because I can see through it. Let's mount this again on our... I love purples and blues and greens together. They're just some of my favorites. Now, if I if I adhere this, I want to be careful because I want to be able to open the card. If I if I adhere it down here, you can see it gets covered up. So we want to make sure that we only adhere it to this top little piece here. And you can put this on dimensionals. I think I am going to put this on dimensionals. I've got some little pieces left over here that I can just use up. 
And remember, you want them only towards the top, top half. Uh, it's getting a little, little close right there. Let's see if we can turn this around and get it a little bit higher. All right. Yep, that looks good. I like that. And so there's another quick and simple card. We're going to cut a piece of Highland Heather cardstock to be five and a half by eight and a half. We're going to score this at two and one eighth, which is two marks past the two. And then also at four and a quarter, which would be a normal half fold. Okay. And you're going to see that this is what we get when we fold it. So you have um, these two marks here. They fold across the front, and you've got this regular size back here. Now, we are going to create um, sort of a, a faux front, if you will. I need a coordinating color. I'm going to bring in some lemon lolly and this is a brand new package so i'll have to open it all right and for this coordinating cardstock mat i need it to be four by five and a quarter this is a regular size mat if you will so four by five and a quarter I love lemon lolly. It's just so fresh and, and pretty. I'm bringing in this piece of designer series paper, which clearly has some of that crushed curry in it. And I'm going to cut two pieces of designer series paper and I need them. I need one to be three and a quarter by five inches and one to be one and a half by five and a quarter. Now, the you want to start with the one that's five and a quarter, and I'm going to cut the bottom off. So I'm going to cut the width to be five and one quarter here. And now I'm going to split this into two pieces. And I'm going to cut, I want to feature, uh, it doesn't really matter here, but you want to work in a continuous span. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to cut my smaller one since this is already five and a quarter. I'm going to cut the one and a half inch now. And then the next piece that I want to use, I'm just going to set this aside right here. The next piece that I want to use is three and one quarter inch. Nope, three and three quarters inches. So three and three quarters inch wide. So you still have a little strip left that you can set aside. You have two little strips now that you can set aside and use for the envelope if you would like. Now this piece has to be a little bit smaller. So it's only five inches in height. So we're gonna have one of these on the front panel and one of these is gonna be on the inside panel. Let's bring in our pieces of designer series paper that we had cut before. So this one is going to go right here and it's going to attach to the front of my Highland Heather piece just on this side. We can go ahead and do that. Let's let's adhere these two pieces together first. Matt. That's my son. OK, 
coming in to see what I'm doing. I'm getting ready for bed as I'm filming this. Now, when I adhere this, I want to make sure I'm only adhering it to this piece right here. So I cannot get my glue past this spot right here. Here's a helpful hint. Keep your glue on this piece. And if you're worried about this other side going too far, that's where you can put it down on this strip. Just lay that down right there. And we'll get that in good shape. And there's no glue on the other side. It looks great. I do need one more piece of cardstock. And I need an inside panel right here. So we would need a piece that is um, a four by five and a quarter. So your normal inside layer. You will we can adhere that down I've been seeing this fun fold all over and it works really great with sceneries and then we're just going to take this other piece of designer series paper that we had and we're going to put that right over here. You can put it right up to the edge. There we go. So here's a space for you to write in and this is what it looks like when it's cold, closed. Let's put a sentiment on this. I'm going to bring in the You're Simply Marvelous from the Perennial Postage stamp set. And we need to find the die that best fits that. So this one, I think it's the second smallest rectangle will fit it. That's pretty tight, but that means it'll probably work. All right. Bring in a scrap piece of basic white. Now, what color are we going to stamp in? I think we need to pull in the Highland Heather some more. Let's go ahead and do that. I mean, we could do crushed curry, but I don't typically like to stamp in yellow, any yellow. Well, not words, I should say. You could go a little bit deeper and you could do a, a grape here too, but I think I'm gonna keep it a little bit soft. So now we will just position this and you can see that there's a little bit of an edge here, so it will fit perfectly. Pull in a little bit of tape. Just position that down and die cut it. And this is what you get when you add the sentiment to the card front using some dimensionals. I wasn't recording when I thought I was, so you'll just have to take my word for it that I die cut it pretty easily and adding the dimensions was pretty easy as well. Hope you like this card as much as I do. I think it's my favorite of the four. Thank you so much for joining me for Tune In Tuesday. Now there won't be a Tune In Tuesday on December 26th. Instead, I'm hosting a three day online stamp camp. And I'm titling this stamp camp, I survived the holidays and now I need stamp therapy, stamp camp. I hope you will join me. I'm going to feature the bundle Fluffiest Friends. You may have recognized this card from my Friday Night Live this past Friday. I've got six great new projects for you and you'll wanna pick up this bundle. Now remember, on Thursday, there's free shipping for orders of $75 or more. 
The Fluffiest Friends bundle is $54. And if you add in a package of, and I don't have it right here to show you, the Meandering Meadow Designer Series paper and the Birds and Dragonflies embellishments, that's $75. And it qualifies you for tonight's class kit. Pass on the information about my stamp camp to a loved one, and that's a great gift that they can give you this holiday season. Stamp Camp is going to be $35. It will include all the consumable supplies to create the six projects. Plus, we're going to play three rounds of bingo, one each day. So you'll receive three bingo cards along with those consumable um, supplies. I hope you'll join me. You can find all the information about this in the links in the video down below. Thanks again for joining me. I hope you have a great rest of your week.